I would like to call the Frontier Regional School Committee to order at 7.06. The first, uh, first order of business is that this meeting is being recorded and any other private recordings must be um, approved by the school committee. So if anybody's out there recording, you need to ask permission to do so. Hearing no one raising their hands, um, we will continue. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, new members to the committee. Um, we have Joe Elias. For some Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, Joe. Thank you very much. And I think that is it. You are the new guy. <laughs> so you get called new guy for the first year. All right. The first order of business is to reorganize. So I will be taking nominations from the chair. I nominate Missy Novak as our new chair. I'll second that. I got a first and second. Do we well, have any other nominations? I, I get to do that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how long you've been chair. You're no longer chair. Uh, any other nominations for chair? Seeing none, closing nominations. All those in favor for Missy Novak being chair? Aye. We lost you again. Testing. Anyone? Oh, I got one. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, yours? All right, I don't know why he's doing that. Volume. Maybe what maybe. else is it? Volume up? Is, is it all the way up? It's at max, yeah. All right. You guys can hear us now? Yeah. Right. You can't just yell. That's the other word. <laughs> All right. So nominations for vice chair. I can nominate them again. I'll second that. I didn't hear the nomination. Got it, thanks. I second it. Any other nominations? Your pardon? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. So we're close nominations and all in favor? All right. Secretary. Right. I nominate Chris White the secretary. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Take your vote. <laughs> 
<laughs> any other nominations. <laughs> <laughs> nominations for secretary. All in favor, Chris? Continuing Aye. No, that's okay. Easier to cheat on. Wait for it. All right, so we need nominations for the budget subcommittee and four nominations for that. Who's on it currently? Is it a, is, isn't it appointed? Or? It's, a, it's appointed, but you look, usually the chair will ask for people interested. Bill, you get to be on the subcommittee yeah, right? again? Uh, if you insist. Yeah, I believe traditionally we try to have one for each budget. So that All right. it's not representative of one budget. So who all, you were on last time too? Bills for Conway. Bills for Conway. And me. I'm here if you were the committee. And Mary. All right. Everybody want to continue in that space? Sure. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. And then we just have to that Bill has no so continuing. I don't think he will. So. <laughs> that, that's what happens when you're not He's here. On that committee. Right. I don't think they'll have any problem with that. We actually say negotiations. Right. The negotiations? Appointed or? It's appointed. It's an off year. It would, it would only be putting us together if we have to either open the contract for some reason or do something out of the ordinary with the contract. I was on the That's what I thought you were. Yeah. All right. I'll be on the All right. These are. This is for negotiations, right? Yeah. Okay. Was Phil on for Conway? Yes. I'm. We'll put Phil down again for Conway. <laughs> he doesn't show up. This is put, lesson learned, right? Show up. So who do we need? We need four four Sutherland, right? Should I do that? Do that? If you'd like to. Someone, someone, someone already on it. It's key time to I don't think I can. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. That, yeah. that makes oh, yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 I'll do it. Okay. Great. Thanks. You can do it. You can. You can. Yeah, you could, but just because it's not on. Yeah. Capital Improvement Committee, um, one from each town. That's the, right. that's the bylaw of the committee, I guess you could say. You want to go on for yeah. your Conway, Conway right? Okay. Sure. Sure. I'm ready. Oh, okay. Hey, you want to save Phil uh, from being. <laughs> I'll take care of Wayne. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. And Keith? All right. Reminders meeting tomorrow night at six o'clock. Oh, it's that's nice. Five on the calendar. Really? Five six. Six. All right. George, you can't change it the night before, George. <laughs> I know that. Get a nice, nice long dinner somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Collaborative rep. All right. First order with the fire. That's it. Yeah. First order with the fire. Uh, fire alarms. Capital group. Yes, it'll be different. We'll actually really have the first but... All right. The collaborative? Oh, that has traditionally been split. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have an interest in being a representative of the collaborative? I'm the rep from the Center of the Collaborative. You are. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 You don't necessarily have to take on every role that they're going on, but. Have we done that before? Have we had someone who's double repped? I don't know. Not, I can't see it being. Shouldn't the important, the important thing is having information going back to the committee of what's right. going on. There's, there's right. not a ton of votes right. and stuff happening at the collaborator outside of their projects and such. So but if he's there for, he's there for someone who wants to do it. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I get what you're saying that you're, like that you're there already for Sunderland, not that you are taking on Lynn's role, but <laughs> that you're already there. I get that. Oh, 
I have been the Mars. I get two servings. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. I've right. been the Mars representative. I don't mind continuing to do that. It's not a large commission. Unless anybody else wants to happen. Okay. Policy, one from each town. You want to stick with Me too. Right. What else we got? What's this for? Policy. And there is there is there is work this year. So it's been too little committee recently, but there is a lot of pages to go through. I don't know. I just have four slides, so I don't have just one slide. Okay. Um so we need a, somebody for policy from Sunderland and Conway. Put Phil down for Conway. Hey, just put Phil down for Conway. I mean, I haven't done anything yet. I can take it. Oh, all right. <laughs> but Phil's for Conway. Yeah. Unless Jared wants it. Yeah. You didn't look at the here. Yeah, yes, that might have been the impression that I was getting. And there's a sick leave bank. Sick leave bank, that's if um, it's as need basis if, if there's a staff member that pushes that access to sick leave bank, two members of the committee meet with two members of the association to decide if they qualify for the sick leave bank. It's to take the, take the decision making out of the people involved's hands or who work directly with the people's hands and puts it there. So um, it's happened once or twice a year district-wide the last few years. I'll be one of the members if, you, if no one else wants to do it. Yeah, I'll be the other. Okay. Yeah. And they've been virtual for other ones have been so it's usually very it's very important. All right. So now we need to approve the minutes from June sixth. That's the last time we met. Got that one here. Let's look at that. So moved. All right. All in favor? All right. Um, You're gone again. Can you hear us now? Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to move things around a little bit to get the city council report. Go ahead and you're up. Hope you hear your report. Yep. Okay, so student council is going well so far. We've had one meeting. Um, uh up, some updates next week is homecoming next week is homecoming week um and student council is organizing spirit week a pep rally and the high school homecoming dance which will take place on saturday september 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m um we're selling tickets for ten dollars um a new Peer mentoring program will be starting where high school students will learn dialogue skills to focus on school climate issues, as well as to facilitate dialogue circles in the middle school. Uh, sports and clubs are off to a good start. Um, 
we've had some cancellations due to weather, but overall going well. And yeah, students are doing good this year. Um, student council has a lot of cool stuff planned to make happen this year, and we are very enthusiastic to, yeah, um, to get all these things done and have fun with it. Great, thank you, Evan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Evan? Evan, what grade are you in? I'm in 10th grade. Thanks for the report. Am I all set to go? <laughs> You're all right. good. Yeah. All right, thank you. Bye. Have a good night. No, no, yeah. So, yeah, just keep over. No, that's fine. I just didn't know. Oh, oh one, one. I, I just was going to sit on the whole thing. That's fine. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything that we need to make sure audio is working. All right. Shelly, this is you, right? That's me. All right. All right. Uh, 74 warrants were signed uh, in July and August and early September. Uh, this is a significant number, but keep in mind it includes bills from the end of the year, from 23, as well as bills and payroll for the new year. Uh, so 74 warrants totaling $6,771. Oh, I said that wrong. $6,771,969.18. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, I also sent you out the expense reports. A couple things to note on that quickly is one, it's really early to even look at the numbers. We are still working out payroll accounts. So if you look at a lot of the teacher lines and the IA lines, they are in deficits. Some of that will flush itself out as payroll and I work to fix all of those pieces. There are some real overages though, um, and there's also some real savings that are gonna get captured. For example, the athletic director line, if you recall, we have a new part-time athletic director and our stipend was increased for that uh, because it was pulled out of the teacher contract. So that is a true overage if you look at that line. That's a $13,000 overage on that account. Uh, but they're saving. So the nurse leader position, if you also recall last year, we voted to, or you voted to move that from uh, full-time position to a part-time stipend position. So there's savings there. So a lot of these things are going to end up a wash at the end of the year. Um, but I did just want to give you some realistic examples. So I'm happy to take questions always. I just think it's premature if you have a question about something salary related. I'm certainly happy to look into it if you do have questions. Uh, so a couple of other things, I'll go as quickly as we can because I know we have a lot on the agenda. Scanlon and Associates uh, is here, not actually in the building, but working digitally and, and virtually with us to conduct last year's audit. So they go through all the books, uh, they create that wonderful report that we had um, come out and present last year, and then they prepare our excess and deficiency. At this point, I have no estimate on e and because it's way too early in the process. We've been working with them for about seven days now. Um, but I did want you to know that that started. Uh, an assessment update. I know Darius's uh, superintendent report has some more information on SOA funding, uh, but what that does to impact our tier is that we received additional money. $14,640 additional we received because they increased the per pupil from $30 a pupil to $60 per pupil. So that means that our assessments have to be reduced because when we build the budget, it's based on the preliminary number. Um, so I gave you those numbers in the report. It's not a significant amount of money, but our towns are always grateful for whatever helps. Uh, a little bit of an investment update for you. So we talked, I think it was in May, about transferring money from interest earnings to the OPEB account. Uh, you voted to, actually we're going to modify that vote because the minutes were wrong. Um, that's on the agenda coming up. But what was discussed in the meeting and voted on was that all interest earned in fiscal year 23 would be transferred to the OPEB fund. That transfer was $57,699.46. That was a pretty significant interest earnings for us, so we're happy to make that 
uh, contribution in there. And then we'll continue to earn 2.1% on our money market account. So we can have that conversation again in the spring about what we want to do with those funds because it is additional uh, revenue for us. Uh, additionally, yeah. Uh, did I read about the CD? Is it five? Is that the typo? Of five point? No, the CD is a. That's something brand new that we're okay. doing. So the money market account is our, um, just our checking savings account that we operate from. So the treasurer, uh, I know most of you met Mike at that meeting where we talked about OPEB last year. He is going to be opening a CD uh, for October, and with East Hampton Savings Bank right now for nine months, they're offering five point one two percent interest. So we're going to take um, the, I don't want to get too in the weeds, but, you know, we have that bond anticipation note for all the capital projects that renews every year right now. And it sits in our bank account until next July when we renew the note or start transferring it to principal plus interest payments. So that money is just sitting there. So we're going to pluck that and put it in this CD, which is about a million dollars and have it earn that 5.12%. And then we can have another conversation about what to do with that. Um, preliminarily, I'm thinking we use that money and transfer it into capital stabilization fund, which we established last year, but currently has no money in it. But that's a conversation that we can have in the spring. So between those two pieces, we're going to probably be looking at at a minimum 50,000, probably 75 to 100,000, depending on um, how the money market account hands out. So I think this is a good move. If we have the opportunity to take advantage of it, it's a good thing for us to do. Uh, capital is also on the agenda later, but I did give you the figures so that you could see where we're at with the financials of the three, three big capital projects. The tennis courts, I'm sure you all saw in the parking lot out there, they're close to done. We're getting there. Uh, same thing with the boiler, we're what, like 98% or so finished, just working out some final tweaks. Those funds are almost fully spent. Uh, there might be a little bit of money left that we throw back in school choice because that was part of the funding for those. Um, but we did have adequate money, so that's great news because we're estimating projects out a year in advance and it's hard to know what's going to happen. And the roof, there's not been a whole lot spent on it to date. 45,000 of the 505 that we allocated, 505,000, uh, because we are going to discuss this at the capital meeting tomorrow night as to next steps. And then we'll have to uh, decide on borrowing another 400,000, which you all have already voted to do. We'll just move forward that, with that process. And then I gave you a revolving fund update. I'm not going to go over all of those numbers. I think it's self-explanatory that our revolving funds are in good shape. Um, one thing to comment on that came up in another meeting that might be of interest to others is the school lunch balance this is is much higher right now than it has ever been in the history of any school lunch program i think um, and that is because if you remember when covid first hit we received ESSER funding and we were supplementing salaries and wages paid normally from the revolving fund we were using grant money so that we could save because we had no idea what school lunch was going to look like when we came back into the building with everyone being free. Um, so if you look at the projected revenue and expenses, it's almost a wash, but we do have the savings, which is a perfect time for us to start looking at what other major things need to be replaced in the kitchen or updates. You know, so we're having those conversations. But I feel like right now we're in good shape way too early to even talk about anything scared with the budget, but otherwise um, all of our revenue looks to be in good position. Found it so far. Yep. You're welcome. Public comment? That's good. No? All right. Somebody else's. I just wanted to um, introduce myself to the people who don't know me. My name's Allison Walters. I'm the president of the Frontier um, Education Association. We've got a new name. Um, and I just wanted to say hello and and uh, glad to be back for a new year. And I'm I'm here or one of the executive board members will be at all of the school committee meetings. Thank you. George, 
here next. Okay, uh, so um, I want to start off by just letting everybody know some of our new staff members that uh, we brought on this year. Uh, we've got two long-term subs, uh, one for our speech and language pathologist, who's Gabby Perinia. Uh She's uh, filling in for Remo Mills, who's going to be coming back in January. Uh, we've got Lindsay Pisano, who's coming, uh, who's uh, our OT, our occupational therapist, and she's filling in for Casey Gavin, uh, who's coming back, I think, in November. Uh, other than that, we've hired three um, full-time teachers, uh, Raina, Raina Kittlesbed, uh, who's a high school uh, chemistry teacher, uh, Amanda Sharon for high school math, and Stephanie Stokes also for high school math. Um, and we have hired, um, we've hired approximately six IAs, and if you're out there, we're still looking for one more instructional assistant, if anybody's interested, if you're out there, uh, give me a shout. Um, professional development update, so we're starting early release, um, Fridays, this Friday, we're going to be starting, we've got the next two sessions with our staff are going to be about microaggressions. Uh, thereafter, we're going, to have, we're going to have two sessions. We've got a professor coming from UMass uh, to speak about AI. Uh, this is something that I know a number of our teachers uh, have been, uh, they've got a lot of questions about it. Um, and, uh, so we're looking forward to, to those discussions with, um, with, uh, during those meetings. Uh, and then we're going to be doing restorative practices again as well. Uh, in addition to our typical, our usual departmental work is also, um, I want to just sort of piggyback on what Evan was saying about the, um, the peer mentoring. So uh, we've got, um, she spoke to the, to the fact that high school students are going to be um, training to facilitate groups at the middle school. I just want to uh, point out that Scott Dredge, Grant Bialik uh, are working to do the training with the high school students. Uh, they've already had, I want to say, two sessions or one session? One, one session. Um, but uh, this is something that we did prior to COVID, um, and we were, we were in a really good um, space with it. Um, COVID obviously uh, made things sort of go on hold for a little bit, um, but we're really glad to be back with doing this and sort of encompassing the entire school with it. Um, and then I sent you all a guidance report, uh, which they release every year, which basically details uh, the schools that um, our, our graduating class applied to, uh, where they were accepted and where they were attending. Uh, then there's also, I think, really interesting information that uh, and I can send it to you if you're interested, but I, I like looking at, there's a, there's, um, they kept track of graduates beginning in 1970 and the, the rate of four-year college attendance uh, between 1970 and 2023, um, 1970, so the four-year college uh, attendance rate at Frontier was 36 percent, uh, and currently it's at 62 percent. Um, so obviously times have changed quite a bit. Um, overall, our students that are, we've got a number of students who are going to four-year colleges. Um, we've got 62 percent who are attending four-year college, 14 uh, percent who are off to two-year college. 1% uh, goes into the vocational tech training, 5% uh, are past uh, 2023 graduating class went into the military, 16% uh, entered the labor market, and 2% were undecided. So um, if you want uh, further information, um, I can, I'm more than happy to, to share info with you from guidance. So that's my report, so I don't have any questions. Curious, you don't have to get into it, but what that compares to the general population in 1970 going out, right? And that I don't, that I don't know, but I would, it would be it really would be interesting. interesting to, yeah. 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 And do you have that data for Frontier for the last five years, 10 years, to look at that progression? In terms of? Just yes, those percent. So, so yep, four I mean, year, two year, so we can write to you and see yep. the last five years. Yes. Yeah, because the guidance, the guidance releases this every year. Yeah. Any other questions for George? All right, so this is, I think next we've got to vote to approve the amended bid, um, minutes with the new amount. Yeah, so the minutes missed the vote, but I went back and watched the recording and the vote did happen. So it was, this is in regards to the OPEB account. What was recorded in the minutes said there was a collective nod of support for the 70-30 split, which was changing our um, stock investment. Just to remind you about that. And then I think it also said um, as presented in regards to the interest transfer. 
So we just wanted to change the language that it, so that it says on a motion from Melissa Novak, seconded by Olivia Leone, approve the general fund transfer of interest earned in FY23 to the OMEV account. So was there were two, so there were two distinct events? Because I remember that nod. So one we didn't have to vote on officially and one we did. And that it happened verbally, it just didn't make it into our... Right. So we're teasing those two apart. Right. Yeah. I feel like there was one discussion. There was. Uh, yeah. Easily confused. We just have to have it on record because the accountant's going to look to see why did you do this transfer? And I have to show this. Second. Thank you. All in favor of amending Chris's note. All right. It was actually hard to decipher the, the video even because we were like giggling for So I shared with this in, um, whoop, wrong way. Don't look at all the pictures, close your eyes. Um, just to get an idea of the magnitude of the amount of projects that we've been doing the last, this, this, you know, this year and even the last couple of years, um, which has been a tremendous amount of work from this committee and um, you know, from central office staff and, and custodial staff to this. Frontier New Boilers, you know, we said they were 95% there. Um, tennis courts, they've since been fencing up. It's still got a few, a couple more weeks and then we can, we'll be painting them and opening them up. We painted the lower part of the gym. Pretty nervous about it. But um, that, that gray in the bottom there, um, it goes all the way around, but it was really getting beat up. And so, um, Jared, what's that look? You know, like, what you remember? Well, I, I, was I was nervous about it. I was nervous. They're like, wait, let's say, hey, we're going to paint the bottom half gray. I'm like, oh, is that going to you know, it's going to look like we cut a corner because you know, to paint the whole gym, you're talking. Who picked the color? Exactly. Who picked the color? I don't know. They did a good job. Okay, it was a great job. Yeah. In things like I do. I went to you twice. Like, you got to walk down and check this out. All right. Well, it's a showcase room in our building. All right. So, shout out to Frank. And Frank, yes. Frank the custodian, yeah. who works here, he uh, is a painter on the side. Yeah. He did. did a great job. And if you haven't been inside the boys' locker room, that's what it looks like if you hold your nose. Right? Uh, but we repainted the floor, um, and that's before all the stink get in there. Um, and right now they are under construction. They're replacing the top part of the press box. It's reached a, a really bad thing, and it's going to probably be completed, I believe they said this weekend, barring how much they can get done tomorrow in the rain. So that's good. Um, I'm going to fire through these other ones just because I want people to know what's going on. Deerfield Elementary they did some bush work out front. They installed 11 AC, room in, AC in 11 rooms, and we only paid for five. That's what that rebate kind of thing that we had in place, uh, which is great. Unbelievably, it didn't work the last week because of the power still has to be hooked up. So um, we're bragging about it, but the hottest week of the year, they didn't have AC. Uh, they got a new dishwasher. Gym floor was redone. Well, refinished. Yeah. Refinished. <laughs> they got a new shed. Store stuff in. Um, Sunderland. They got AC in the library, and they had to repair some of their floor entryways. Right now, the oil tank replacement is a it's a big project. So, one hundred thousand dollars is out to bid. Um, they had a new phone system replaced. They had painted the whole interior of the school. They've been there. Wow. They did a wonderful job. It looks beautiful. Waitly, they replaced the floor, gave me some of those tile floors that are very difficult to clean um, with the new uh, new surface. They put a new sidewalk they got through a grant, a safe, safe schools grant. Um, we have to take down some trees, got struck by lightning. It's gonna happen in a few months. They painted their library too, and got new, painted their cafeteria, and got new cafeteria tables. Now we got a new generator. They see two classrooms there, two classrooms left before they're complete up there. 
they got a new range, which is an absolute horror show because there's so many problems with it. We won't get into it. They have new stage curtain. It was a primitive town meeting. They have new flooring. They're doing a flooring in several rooms every year. That's the office and the classrooms. And they got a storage container. We did too here at Frontier, and I didn't get a picture of that. But there's the minute they got a new restroom partitions that were gross. As you can see, they're probably going to have to do the floor soon. And that is in pictures, what we got. I thought you might want to see it that way instead of. Um, the Capitol Committee is meeting next is tomorrow um, you know, to talk about the roof, to talk about the letter. It's not on the agenda for tomorrow night, but we're going to start putting together what we're doing at Frontier. You should have obviously have a letter today that came, came to me like midday. I sent it, I had uh, Jen sent it along, but the fire chief, uh, uh, Chief Swayze, really wants us to consider um, prioritizing our fire alarm panel. We've had a lot of problems with it. It is very expensive. Uh, this is a proprietary system, and the whole thing has to be replaced. Um, we're also going to be talking about energy management systems that are very expensive. So while we knocked off some great things, but we got new boilers, we're running on an energy management system that is running on Apple's, not an Apple IIe, uh, Windows. Oh, yeah. What Windows is it? Windows XP. XP. So yeah. it's running on Windows XP. We actually have to go find computers to run the program because it can't run on any of the newer computers. So and it's about... And we're going to probably be talking with just in a general overview of ideas that are going on. We're probably going to be talking with the uh, Energy Commission in town to maybe make it some grant work because we can do save a lot of money if we can own our, our heating and um, AC use through management that way. So, a lot of different things are coming there, but I'll do a report after. Um, you know, we need tomorrow's meeting is really talking about the roof. We have another solution for the roof that we're going to discuss that may be a bit cheaper, be a bit easier. Um, and then we'll probably have another meeting to go through other capital, but it'll be another busy capital year um, on its way. Can I ask something about the roof? Yep. Uh, Sunderland's not far away from one either. Did you discuss or look at solar panels or solar shingles or, or ways to, to use the two for one? You're going to put a new roof on one of to go with the solar shingles and try to get. Right. So right now we're a flat. Um, we're a flat roof with um, what do you call it? A, 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 a membrane. A membrane. But so, um, and right now the, the committee is looking at doing it in stages because we don't have the money to do it all at once. Doing it all at once would probably be around four million. Maybe then market adjustment may even higher. So we're looking at the most uh, hot spot roofs where we have the most leaks right now, which is the main frame here, and then over the boys' locker room down there, and then over the band room. It's kind of three little smaller sections. Uh, we are looking at, I've had conversations when I met with the, uh, uh, Natalie Blay and uh, Joe Comerford about, you know, more incentives to putting solar on municipal buildings because it would make complete sense. Uh, so the idea is there. Right now, we don't have any funding toward that. Um, so it's very different. You know, ideally, when you look at Frontier, you think about solar over the metal area of the library, but that is such a mess above us that we can't touch it without probably redoing it. And so we'd have to put a million into redoing it before we even get the solar panels on it. So there's conversation, but it's not fitting neatly into our plans right now. So. Anything else on There you go. There you go. That's all I got. Um, all right. We've got updates in the student handbook. So we have Scott Dredge with us. So we haven't seen in a while. Still hasn't grown here. Still. <laughs> Still me. I got it. Uh, so having sent around, I put a nice little concise summary of what I spent my summer working on. As many of you know, or your new year to this, uh, that's my role every year. Um, as I get to change, update your student handbook uh, according to changes that are made at the state level uh, or Changes that need to be made based on the current climate and culture within the building. So I have uh, here for you uh, page numbers of where you can find what we've uh, added and changed, and I'll just briefly summarize for you what we've done. Um, last school year, uh, last November, uh, there was 
legislation passed at the state level that kind of snuck in and surprised all of us in the school systems uh, regarding uh, disciplinary regulations. And so it was really kind of more of a, a due process legislation uh, to hold schools more accountable to show that schools are making best efforts to uh, find uh, supportive measures or alternative measures to discipline. And so the language to that was added into our discipline section, page 24 of our handbook. Uh, really, like I said, it's a due process measure. Uh, and so I'll leave it at that. Uh, page 40 and 41, I updated language to uh, include certain technological devices like smartwatches and, and uh, earbuds and things like that to our cell phone use policy. Uh, many kids are finding they're using their, their uh, Apple watches the same way they would use a cell phone. So uh, we just wanted to clean that up. Uh, like I said, that's an adjustment for, you know, what we see happening around the school year and just make those adjustments there. Uh, more importantly for the middle school, um, I was asked, uh, we had some incidents take place last year um, regarding social media just during the school day. Kids were taking their phones and using them even though they're not supposed to have them. So I had a language to the cell phone policy to the middle school that if um, the cell phone is confiscated during the school day here, uh, a, a parent or caregiver needs to come get the phone. So actually, for the first one today, uh, and it went well. <laughs> Parent was very cooperative and would understand. Um, page uh, 42 um, we included procedures uh, to our existing gender identity policy, um, and which really was for a method of changing a student's name within the school setting. Piggybacking off that, we added, uh, so we met the summer with the guidance department and uh, added protocols to how to do that within the building. Um, so, really, what that means is uh, you know, when a student wants to, you know, have that happen. We have a form that stays with guidance that goes to IT because there's a lot that happens with that. They want their name to be changed in terms of their email address, things like that. So we have that in place um, that allows us to uh, have a, 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 an internal document go back and forth between IT and guidance to make sure that we're supporting the student properly. And I, of course, added language to uh, the handbook about artificial intelligence. Um, you know, there's, we're, we're going to get some PD on this. Uh, I know some teachers are worried. Uh, it's been a big topic discussion. Um, you know, in our PD, we're, we're going to look for ways to support and use AI intelligence in the classroom. But we also still need to include language in the student handbook for using AI for plagiarism. So uh, I just submitted some language into that. Uh, that would fall into our plagiarism guidelines. Just really just add AI to it. So, and finally, uh, updated language in our dress code section to clarify the balance between free speech and disruption and disorder or the infringement of rights of others, including gender non-conforming students, so the school can ensure a safe and secure learning environment. Um, really, that comes to uh, striking a balance for the school about. Yes, and making sure students are educated about their their rights to free speech, but also if they're wearing a shirt that infringes upon the rights of others, um, that that is that is not technically free speech, and the school can and will enforce a dress code to that. So. Yes, in the past we've gotten copies of the handbook. Is that possible? To talk about? Oh, it's all online. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a big computer guy, so I know. I'm just, I'm just another use for your MacBook. <laughs> Thank you. So and the, the other thing is, is this a lot of changes for this year? Uh, this is the most I've ever years? done. This is the most I've ever done. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's been a busy year, uh, but a lot happened. So um, yes, the, the handbook is completely digital now. Um, we did away with uh, purchasing physical handbooks. It got really too costly for the school, and we found that. Thank you. Even, even the middle school wasn't using them anymore. So I um, thought we'd save a little money that way and just post it to the uh, school website. At student orientation, I notify all students where it can be found and have them sign off that they acknowledge that I told them where it is uh, so they know how to access them. So the like, same similar question. So they sign off that they know where it is. So returning students, do they also sign off 
on the updates? Like, how do they know when these updates happen? Hey, so we don't go through every update. I, 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 what I share with the kids during uh, every orientation is there's updates to it every year. It's for you to use like a like a, as a resource, a dictionary, a encyclopedia. Not for you to learn about every year. It's there for you to access if you have questions. But like, would this page be like, okay, here are the updates. Everyone coming back. No, them. I just embed it all in, and that's not. Okay. It would be important for the students to know that some of these are significant updates, right? They are, um, but like I said, uh, if, if 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 they really need to ask, they can always ask. Any of the adults. A lot of times when kids have questions, they'll go to a guidance counselor or an EQ and, and have a discussion. I would guess that the, the AI plagiarism is a prize being taught in English and history class. Yeah. No yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's definitely been a topic of discussion at, at least our high school humanities classes, for sure. Yes, Allison's shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to open a can of worms asking about this, but I am curious if there's been any thought or discussion about those little packets for putting phones in those little long pouches for electronics. Um, I know it's an expense. We, we've to watched and you know, heard in the news about other schools trying them. And yeah, there's a lot. Um, I, I think the jury's still out about how effective they are. Some schools manage them well, some don't. Um, you know, we have that you see behind you here, those sleeves. Some teachers use those and they put them in, have the students put them in, um, they walk in the high school classroom. Um, so far this year, I've heard from the teachers that our new policy, which they were definitely made aware of during orientation for the middle school, um, has been working very well. Uh, it was a good year to do it because I actually started this last year in the spring due to some significant events that took place in the middle school and social media. So uh, our current eighth graders, who were seventh graders at the time, we're fully aware of how, how that went. Um, but back to your question is, uh, we've never really felt that it needed to be a, a process here because we also have some teachers that um, have the kids use them, uh, especially in our, in our technology media classes. Um, so there's a balance. We're, we're working to strike a balance here. Um, really, it comes down to our teachers having those relationships with kids in the classroom management practices, um, whether they allow it or not. Yes, we have some bumpy times, but I wouldn't say it's a, a major school climate issue at this point. So I think, unless anybody else has any questions, we've got a vote on waiving the policy for two readings. Step so, one. obviously, timely, we've already launched this handbook. <laughs> um, you know, I guess if normally we would be doing something like this in, you know, August. Um, but um, if you have a double reading of any policy, and it basically a handbook is an extension of your policy, so you need to waive your double reading. So you've got to all agree that you're not going to do a double reading of, the, of this policy, and you're going to vote it tonight. You can do that. I got one more question. About the last one, about the clarifying the language between free speech and the Instructor, like there was a really significant situation in Middleborough. That is the case I studied thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, How did that play out? Well, and so what I did was, um, uh, I, to be honest with you, is I, I took language from their student handbook, studied that versus what the ruling was at the at the Mass, uh, or what what the uh, preliminary ruling was at the Mass uh, Supreme Court. What was it? Right? I don't know. So they, they basically said that. Um, the, the school, you know, it was easy for them to fund a morning quarterback, but the, the school kind of overextended their, their reach, and they had hoped that, um, that, they would, that that would start as a discussion about why language on that youngster's t shirt infringed upon the rights of a protected class um, rather than just cynical, you know. So the language in their handbook. No one had a problem with it. It was just challenged. Um, so I just wanted to get ahead of it and uh, say to myself, like, hey, this is this is probably going to happen at some point in, in our lives. So uh, I, I took some language from there, looked at the ruling and what the uh, specific language was about, how, how to support both sides. 
and really, you know, my approach would always be like to start with a discussion right, with the student and the family about why why this might hurt someone. Um, it's good to go and go from there because that does support our restorative practice as well, anyways, rather than just sending the kid home. Okay. Any other questions? I'll be yeah, to we, yeah. I'll second it. All right, all in favor of waiving the two read policy for this? Aye. You're gone again. Yeah. Yep. So I want to be a It's like putting air in a tire of your car. Like that's a fix. I just put air in it every other day, and I have it's like a brand new tire. <laughs> so I want to clarify, and I don't know. I just got this. I printed this out. Um, what was included in the packet for everybody has Conway on here. Yeah, the label Conway, I think, yeah. Yeah. That was supposed to change. Well, that. Yeah, that's okay. That's so you've got a resolution to um, lend artists support to help to fund uh, rural, uh, rural aid to school bill to help to encourage the legislators to move forward on that. And what's in the packet has Conway listed in there, this would get updated to read Frontier for you in the school district. It's the only change in the wording right here. We just so, have a voice to change. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked about this a little bit um, before the summer. There's a bill going through to help to kind of write a bit of the disconnect between what happens in big cities and what happens out in rural districts and help to recognize the fact that it costs more to provide education out here than kids. Um, and at this point, the equation doesn't support that. So this would help to bring us closer anyway. Um, if you haven't gotten gone to it, check out the link on ruralschoolsma.org, which has lots of information you want to familiarize with this um, and tonight we're looking to pass this resolution to help to send this to this legislation along because things move a little slower out there awesome. i'll make a motion accept it i have a question what um, does it does a document exist for frontier because i'm looking Whereas education now accounts for fifty eight percent of the Conway Town budget. Have like what? Yeah. What, what are we? What are we going to say there? Uh, right. I will. I will right. I will. I will have it updated yeah. for with our information. But, you know. I think you can go ahead and vote it because the idea is that you want it to pass on to the state legislature. That this that this is important, Jessica. You can just amend this by striking that paragraph. But Gary's taking the fall. I, I practiced and I did it wrong. <laughs> and on a side note, throw a compliment back at you. Jessica, <laughs> Jessica has been working hard. Um, she's very hard. Very hard yeah. pushing this forward, attending meetings, because right now, you know, rural school aid is great, but in order for us to get rural school aid, we have to get non rural schools, state legislative people, to 
be voting this. And so we have to advocate for ourselves. And so part of this advocacy um, to you know, go for that full goal of the 60 million and all the transportation and all the other kind of things that are connected to it. Um, still with Jessica said the last main thing. Uh, uh, and is part of that. So this is you know, kind of some folks here are like, well, it's a no brainer. Of course, we want to like this this forward. But we really do need to continue to advocate for ourselves because if we don't get in the ear of more um, the suburban and urban um, representatives, we're not going to be able to get the money we need. Right. It's like this double edged. We have a smaller portion, and so the, nobody's thinking about the equation and how it impacts us. But also, when we say, hey, look at us out here. So many few people out there waving their hands, and so we you need the support of the rest of the folks. Are there any other regional schools in Western Mass applying for this? So we're not applying for this. This is legislation that we're asking to help to move forward. At this point, okay. it's a committee still, correct? Okay. Jessica? We're trying to get a hearing with the Joint Committee on Education. Yes. And we have a committee subcommittee right now. Missy, Jess, and I are on it, and we've been reaching out to the suggestion and most of reaching out, reaching out to all the school committees for the whole state and all the select boards for the whole state. As you can imagine, Easterners have been so quick to reply or to sign on, but we're trying to restrict the Hill schools. You know, we're trying to do our best to get rural schools signing on and then spread it out. And at this point, how many, I, I didn't check it today to see how many folks have signed on. If, uh, I can get permission from Mary and Keith and it is at their names, so we'll be at like 139. <laughs> All right. Mary, Keith, and Damien. <laughs> it's possible I just missed it when I just missed it. <laughs> you brought this up last I did, week, right? Yeah. And you gave yeah. us a website to go to? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I swear I did that. All right, it's perfect. No, I, I will have. All right. Yeah. And that's actually that's what we're asking the other committee. Like, if you're at an open meeting and you say this is a, everyone just write their hand and then yeah. all those names at the committee go to Justin. So that's what we're asking you know, the rest of the state. So if you do make it, the website's a little cumbersome to get in there. I remember going to the website. I can't. It's easy to say I, I'm good. Yeah, I thought. That. So, do we think we can strike the entire last three whereas statements and strike the Conway Elementary School District and oh, replace it? The whole Conway, I have one for Frontier. So maybe the wrong Does it one. Does say Frontier anywhere on that? Page? It says Frontier nowhere on this. Page. Okay, there is one that's Frontier. Yeah. Ah. No, I, I, I don't know. We did this over a month ago. Yeah, I know. But, um, you know, I'm not going to find it right away. I think, I don't know what I'm saying. If the intention is that we want to put this resolution forward, if there's no, you know, I mean, if it says 58%, yeah, that's different. But all the other intentions are we just would switch in a frontier for an online. Correct. It doesn't seem like we can't vote. You vote to, if you could amend the vote to approve this and um, ask the superintendent to make the adjustments necessary to show the frontier information. And that would be, you're voting, you know, I mean, you're done, it doesn't change the content of, you know, we didn't ask for, what, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And so I think if you say voting it, voting it, move to vote it, with changes made to the document to represent the frontier information. So just for clarification purposes, I think, the initial step has to be to vote for the amendments that you'll put in about Frontier in here with the appropriate information, and then the next step would be to vote to pass that resolution. I'm saying you. Or we can just do just all kind of like kind of like swoop. I think you do it all in one fell swoop. Like you say, I you know like you you know say you vote the minutes as amended. You're saying we're going to resolution, we're gonna resolution as, as uh, will be as amended by the. I have it here. I could read it out loud into the record. And send a copy to Chris. So yeah, not just, a, I know. just send a copy to Chris and everybody will. Yeah. Or you can go ahead and read it. That'll be okay. fine. All right. All of the 
Yes. Whereas rural school districts in Massachusetts face daunting threats to their financial sustainability and thus to their ability to provide rural students with the same quality of educational opportunity enjoyed by students in other parts of the state. Whereas the Commonwealth has rightly touted its significant increase in education funding following the 2019 Student Opportunity Act. However, the most needy rural and declining enrollment districts have received less than 1% of that increase in funding. Whereas no less than four recent state and legislative commissions have reviewed the looming crisis facing rural schools and concluded that rural school districts are seriously under-resourced and underfunded. Whereas the most recent of these commissions was specifically created by the SOA, quote, to study and make recommendations concerning the long-term physical health of rural school districts that are facing or may face declining student enrollment, including recommendations for, among other things, expanding the rural school aid grant program and establishing and including a low and declining student enrollment factor within the foundation budget. Whereas in its final report issued in the December 2022, the Commission on the Physical Health of Rural School Districts concluded that districts with very low student enrollment cost 16.7% more to operate than the state average, and that small K-12 regional school districts cost 22.7% more to operate than larger ones than per pupil. Whereas the Frontier Regional School District is such a limited enrollment rural district, whereas Frontier has received virtually no increase in Chapter 78 for years, while the district's fixed costs, which do not decline in tandem with student enrollment, have pushed the district's operating budgets up substantially over that period. Whereas the towns of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley, with a combined population of approximately 12,300, have very limited ability to raise property taxes or other revenues, and yet are left to carry the burden of increasing education costs, therefore be it resolved that the Frontier Regional School Committee urges the Massachusetts Legislature's Joint Education Subcommittee to schedule a prompt hearing for H3567 and its companion bill S2388, and ultimately to recommend passage by both chambers of the Massachusetts General Court. Both bills would fulfill the commitment of the SOA to address the chronic underfunding of rural and declining enrollment schools by requiring an annual appropriation of $60 million for rural school aid and implementing the full range of well-documented recommendations contained in the report of the Commission on the Fiscal Health of Rural School Districts. Written by uh, Martha Thurber, who is a lawyer and the chair of the Mohawk Regional School Committee. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, is our motion to present? So, we're going to have two votes or just one? No, just one on that. We're going to make a motion. That's it. Okay. So, let's, can we have the, this is how I'm going to write the motion. So, on a motion of whoever's going to do it. The resolution from the rural aid school as outlined in the attached document titled, and I'll title it whatever that title is, um, as provided in the supporting documents. So that's our that's what we're going to vote on. Yep. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're going to need to vote on the superintendency group agreement. It is not ready. And just kidding. <laughs> so um, we met last week. I you know, put it on the agenda because we put the agenda together last week. Hopefully yeah, we can get there. Had me with the attorney yesterday to go again, go through some of the same kind of things, talking about percentages and stuff. So we're going to fine tune it. Hopefully have to use some. Yeah. And any other reports from committee chairs? I don't think there's been anything from the collaborative, but I need in the 27. That's so. the the All right. There is. My report. So you received it, but I still want to highlight some things on it. Uh, make sure you have your calendar marked for our joint meeting on the 28th at 6 p.m. So we'll have IT here, so we won't have this problem. <laughs> um, but in, you know, it'd be a great time to have a conversation regarding it you know, that we presented. But you know, please bring questions. And stuff. I think we uh, talking to another member today, having a conversation around the document and kind of bring it will help bring it to life. Um, you know, if you have concerns and that kind of stuff, remember we did invest a lot of money into this and um, and resources, and we want to make sure that we're clear moving forward. And if we have concerns or that kind of stuff, um, so Jim will be here on site. And as I said in the email, I sent out to families on Monday. Um, we're also doing staff meetings during the day. Administrative meetings start the day, then have staff meetings and stuff as well, so we can get more and more input to help build our plan um, at that point. So, um, you said 
uh, Shelly said it, you know, she didn't say that free rent for all was done permanently, so they'd have to actually pass a new bill to change that. So, um, you know, we can, we don't have to guess every year moving forward. I did a little summary of the rural aid. Um, we did increase that to 15 million. You can see what, um, you know, Frontier received uh, in the change there from 88,000 to 213,000. These numbers are off an estimate from one of our, I believe from either Matt MASS or Mars, I forget which, from one of our associations does, gives us projections. So it's gonna be around that, don't, even though I did the exact number, it was the exact number that um, they gave us. Um, so that's great. We're gonna to have to have conversations this year about when we get into budget season is, is rural aid real? I hate to say put it that way, but if we can't depend on, on the following year, we can't be offsetting our budgets by, high. so how much, much like we do with transportation, you know, we never know what the state's going to give us for reimbursement on transportation, so we do a little guessing game based on whatever, Shelly's usually conservative, because you don't want to be wrong. Um, so we'll be having those conversations about that. So while the rural aid looks like a, a good chunk of money, um, the reality kind of sets in when you look at your chapter 70, which is the next thing on the, on the report that I gave you, where Frontier got a total increase um, from chapter 70 money of uh, $29,280. And so that sounds like a lot to you at home, but we went up in wages alone last year of 230,000. So that's just in a normal growth year. Like we didn't, there was no crazy teacher contract kind of thing. It was just a normal COLA growth year. And we were over 300,000 overall. So as Jessica just said earlier, and what she, what she said when she read it out loud, we continue to take on more money um, from, you know, and the state's not picking up its share and it keeps getting less and less each year. So again, conversations that we're gonna have. So just trying to talk more and more about it so that when we get to budget season, especially those who are new to this, um, give a bit more of a general idea of what, why it's important. There is legislation and they are talking about whether or not they're gonna do something for hold harmless schools. So we're a hold harmless school because our enrollment is not going up. And so that means we only get, in a whole harmless category, we get the per student minimum. And so $60 per kid is not gonna do it as we just see these numbers here. So there is conversation and legislation we, and we're probably gonna to have to do some advocacy on that. Um, SOA, the Student Opportunity Act, is Chapter 70 money. It was very confusing early on. It sounded like there was this new money, but they were just putting more money into Chapter 70. And to its, you know, to its credit, it's going to a lot of students. It's just a lot of the students in Massachusetts are in like 10 districts. And there's over, I forget the number, because you remember the number of total number of students. So it's like 100, I say it's 119, but I'm pulling it out of the air, that are not getting any additional money through SOA. And so there's a lot of districts out there that are affected um, you know, by this. So they are going to be looking to do some changes, and we're going to need to advocate for it. Sure. With all those questions and discussions and legislation, is there today raised the possibility of changing the ratio of charter tuition and school choice tuition? So I don't think they're going to touch school choice. You know what I mean? Or they're going to, if they, it'll be melted in, it won't be a standalone kind of thing. You know, school choice, maybe they will. I don't know. I mean, it, it affects people differently. We're obviously a winner in school choice in, in this area, and I'm sure some of the other regional schools would love to see it, see that change. The same kind of thing is happening on the Cape. Um, where they have some winners and some losers um, with school choice. So I'd be curious to how they adjust that. So they could. It's in the chap it, it's in the rural schools report about addressing how the those funding formulas are done. I, mean, I, mean, I don't actually I don't know enough about the finance of it, but they are looking about trying to change so that you do receive more money. So we'll see how they shift things around politically. Um, also from our advocacy groups of uh, Mars um, to do with Mars, the budget and us, she does a great job of kind of letting us know where things are trending and you know if you're following the tax collections in the state if you read the, the, those pages in the paper um, tax revenues are down so which means we're probably going to a tighter year which again makes you wonder where are they going to reduce are they going to reduce transportation are they going to reduce rural aid are they going to reduce so we're going to keep an eye on that but it also Frontier's in good shape financially, but I'm saying it a lot of some of our smaller schools who are in tougher shape. Um, 
we're already like being careful about how we use reserve funds day one, where it's like, you know, let's not just throw that on school choice because we may have to use that to offset next year's budget to level fund our program. So I'm just putting it out there that that information got is out there. And after saying that all the money problems, it is a super intense contract season. Um, <laughs> I'm only saying that out loud because it's going to, we're hoping to be able to get the new um, super intense agreement, group agreement thing in place so that maybe we can try it out. Um, hopefully it's not gonna be a contentious superintendent contract here. It's weird for me to be talking about it this way, but um, you folks have to let me know by where the superintendent presents that made by January, by the end of January, you're gonna renew my contract. But it's gonna take you guys to have a joint meeting to make that vote, which means you gotta put that on the calendar, and then you gotta meet, negotiate, and then you gotta come back and vote the contract as a joint meeting. So it's a couple meetings that have to happen. Technically, the contract could be done after January, but you have to notify me your intentions to renew before, January, before the end of January. So, you know, we're probably looking at November or something like that um, to have these meetings. I have a general kind of idea how to do it, but if we can also get the superintendent group agreement and kind of follow that, so kind of continue work out some of the kinks of that about how we make decisions as the five committees coming together in governance of the superintendent. So. I'm just putting that there on people's radar because it's a, managing me is a big portion of your job. Can I go back to one thing about the budget? Just being, I'm going to be the dumb new guy. Um, you know, I hear something that the state's education budget was passed after we had already done our budget, and there was extra money allocated by the state, and we're putting that into the choice fund. Is it is significant? Is that correct, or did I dream that something? Isn't there? You know, the well, so, so we we one so there's different we have different revenue sources that come from the state, but through chapter seventy we budgeted at thirty dollars per student. Yeah. Okay, because that was one of the things on the table. It came out with sixty, and so that difference we're getting back to the towns because their assessments will change will be less because the state's giving us more money. Right. It's not a lot of money. It's not a lot. It's a few thousand bucks for you know. It's, what fourteen thousand total or something of that sort. So that is something that's changing. Um, obviously, we didn't know how much uh, rural aid we're going to use, so we're going to decide how we're going to use that this year. Um, you know, and so you know, yeah, there are those different kind of things that we didn't know during budget season. Is when we push that into next year, is that an excess or a safety net or no? It has to be. It has to be returned to the towns this year directly because we've over assessed them at this point. So we issue them a credit and they pay less. But it's a good question regarding the rural aid. Do we use it this year? So what we will do is we will use the rural aid because um, we have to use that by the end of the school year. And we can't save that. And perhaps something that we're paying, we're paying a salary on choice. We'll save that choice so that we can then apply that to the following year. You know, I mean, something that we'll try to push problems off through the next year. It's kind of the game we kind of play is that um, save money help reduce next year's budget by using money that we have to use in this fiscal year to aid this year's budget. Even if it doesn't need aid, we aid the next year's budget. So, um, yeah, good, but I guess Shelly said, Frontier's in good finance, she'll help right now. We are. We just have to be careful of using a funding source that's not consistent year to year. We don't want to, you know, we were fortunate that we didn't have to use ESSER in that way. Some districts are having to do major cuts because ESSER money's pretty gone and they you can't are gonna, fund positions. You are gonna see neighboring districts have massive cuts this year because they used ESSER. They had to, in some cases they had to. You know what I mean? In some cases it was the, let's use the money we have and they put positions on it. Now those positions have to come off and they have to make the choice they're gonna continue to fund them. So it, it's, I mean, I'm not in the room with those districts. It's not how you wanna do it, but sometimes they were forced to because they had no other choice based on, their, you know, we were, we're in better financial shape, but we did some smart moves during COVID to save money using different ways of ESSER and, you know, revolving accounts, you know, you know, buying out, you know, buying out, but funding those so we weren't getting deficits there. So we didn't have to use, we did a lot of smart things. It's all shut. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we have to be careful with rural aid as well, not just with salaries and wages, but at this point, although this is a significant amount of money compared to what we've received, we sort of use it as the 
emergency fund. We hold on to it and wait and see if something comes up that we can't pay for, and then use it primarily right now to fund these other projects. Like the sea container that we did purchase was like $5,000. Know, the top of the press box. Those are things that we're not putting on capital lists to try to have our towns fund. And it's, it's things that we need. So, you know, we have to talk about how to spend it once we know what the kind of money a number is. But there's lots of little things that we do behind the scenes with some of those additional grant funds. Right. I would imagine the administration is going to find ways to spend it correctly. Well, and we're going to work with the capital committee too. I don't think we got enough. I don't think we got enough bang for our buck. How we use, how much we saved school choice during COVID, and then took a major capital expense off the town by replacing the boilers that were half a million dollars. It didn't even reach the town meeting floor. You know, unless we brought it up, they didn't even know that we that we saved and then we spent. We saved them money. So if we didn't do it that way. We spent it in other ways. That would have been, you know, divided to four towns. Half a million dollars, you kind of guess what your, your cost was, and some of those towns couldn't afford it last year. So, like, we've made some smart moves, tennis courts, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, paying $15,000 for brand new courts, from, I mean, some of the assessments in towns. I mean, that is, again, we use $200,000 of school choice. So, um, we've been smart with it. I know there's been that we're going to have those discussions about how much choice in the future. I'm sure it's going to come up in whatever sense, but I also want to know that the savings is being sent off to the town. And we've been very We've been very conservative with it, um, and we have to be sure that people don't recognize conservative business savings at the expense of others. Like, you know, we're trying to, and that's, that's where I got. No executive session. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Good night, Bill.